The U.S. Virgin Islands is suing J.P. Morgan over connections to Jeffrey Epstein that they say run deep. America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. Jeffrey Epstein committed heinous crimes, such as sex trafficking minors. And some say he couldn't have done it without the help of powerful institutions. Now, we don't know all the powerful connections Epstein had, since files on him are so redacted, they look like what would happen if a barcode could become morbidly obese. But we do know J.P. Morgan was one of them. J.P. Morgan did business with Epstein as early as 1998 and managed about 55 Epstein-related accounts worth hundreds of millions of dollars. This has come back to bite the bank, as it now faces two lawsuits. One is from an unnamed victim. We've covered that lawsuit before. But since then, the Attorney General of the U.S. Virgin Islands has filed a lawsuit against the bank, and a lot of new details have come to light. Both lawsuits allege that the bank facilitated Epstein's sex trafficking operation and turned a blind eye to red flags. The U.S. Virgin Islands lawsuit also alleges that J.P. Morgan obstructed federal law enforcement agencies investigating Epstein by concealing numerous shady cash payments. What? Ignoring red flags and hiding suspicious activity? Why, that doesn't sound like a giant U.S. bank to me. Especially not around 2008. What's next? You're going to tell me that baby roadrunners shouldn't be trusted around coyotes? Unsurprisingly, J.P. Morgan claims that it didn't know about Epstein's crimes and argues that it can't be held liable. J.P. Morgan contends that it merely provided routine banking services to Epstein. Routine banking services. They think managing accounts worth hundreds of millions of dollars is routine? What's their routine breakfast? A Fabergé egg scramble? But the Virgin Islands lawsuit paints a very different picture. It says J.P. Morgan executives knew about the sex abuse claims, especially James Jess Staley, J.P. Morgan's former private banking chief. According to the lawsuit, Staley and Epstein had a very close relationship, close enough to exchange photos of young women in sexually suggestive emails, even after Epstein was convicted of sex crimes in 2008. The U.S. Virgin Islands also claims that Staley and Epstein exchanged more than a thousand emails through Staley's J.P. Morgan Chase email account between 2008 and 2012. He contacted Jeffrey Epstein more than I contact my grandma. I know because my grandma actually sent me that article to guilt me for not calling her more often. Considering these are the stories she sends me, you can maybe see why. According to the lawsuit, some of the emails suggest Staley may have been directly involved in Epstein's sex trafficking operation. One alleged email exchange includes Staley telling Epstein to say hi to Snow White. <gasps> that can only mean one thing. Epstein was at Disney World. Tell him to grab me some Mickey ears and a churro. Epstein allegedly replied by asking, what character would you like next? Staley allegedly answered, Beauty and the Beast, to which Epstein said, Well, one side is available. According to the U.S. Virgin Islands, these references are code for young women. Either that or they're both really into Disney cosplay conventions, which is equally as creepy. To make matters worse, the suit alleges Epstein wired money to a woman around the time that Mr. Staley stayed at Epstein's Palm Beach, Florida mansion and then again to the same woman when Mr. Staley told Epstein he would be in London. At first, J.P. Morgan defended Staley, but now is suing him, saying that if the allegations that he knew about Epstein's operations are proven true, he'll have to reimburse the bank. The bank also accused Staley of intentional and outrageous conduct for supposedly misleading it about Epstein's character and conduct. They're alleging Staley tricked them into thinking a registered sex criminal was a decent guy? At that point, I'm not sure if Staley should be sued or J.P. Morgan should be inspected for terminal gullibility. J.P. Morgan even went so far as to accuse Staley of sexually assaulting one of Epstein's victims, the one suing the bank. According to the bank, Staley put his own personal interests ahead of the company's. 
Wow. I can't believe an employee of a company that routinely deceived the public for its own gain would routinely deceive that company for his own gain. That's more shocking than an unplugged toaster oven. But Saley wasn't acting alone. The Virgin Islands lawsuit alleges that multiple executives were heavily invested in keeping good relations with Epstein, even if it meant overlooking red flags. I'll tell you more after the break. Welcome back. J.P. Morgan claims that it didn't know about Epstein's sex trafficking operations, but there were plenty of red flags that the bank allegedly ignored. According to the U.S. Virgin Islands lawsuit, a J.P. Morgan risk management team in 2006 noted that Epstein routinely made cash withdrawals of $40,000 to $80,000 several times a month, totaling over $750,000 per year. This was the same year Epstein was first charged with the sex crime. Officials concluded that year that his account should be classified as high risk and require special approval. High risk is totally not the same as a red flag, right? The lawsuit alleges more internal red flags. In 2010, one compliance officer wrote, See below new allegations of an investigation related to child trafficking. Are you still comfortable with this client who is now a registered sex offender? Of course, Staley said he was cool. They're Disney cosplay buddies, nothing creepy about that. And in 2011, staffers discussed news articles connecting Epstein to human trafficking of underage girls. There were warnings that Epstein should go, and that there was lots of smoke, lots of questions. One senior compliance official straight up called Epstein a sugar daddy, noting his sponsorship of private bank accounts and credit cards for two 18-year-olds, one of whom was named regularly as part of his inner entourage. Ugh, what a terrible day to understand English. Epstein's pedophilia was allegedly so well known that J.P. Morgan executives joked about Epstein's interests in young girls. Mary Erdos, now J.P. Morgan's head of asset and wealth management, received an email in 2008 asking whether Epstein was at an event with Miley Cyrus, who was a minor at the time. Epstein was so creepy, he made brony fan fiction look like grandma's chocolate chip cookie recipe. Man, I really should call her more often. And yet, it took until 2013 for J.P. Morgan to drop Epstein as a client. Erdos reportedly testified that the decision to terminate Epstein as a customer was made after she became aware that his withdrawals were actual cash. Because being a notorious pedophile is one thing. But withdrawing cash? This is a family company. Good day, sir. This was despite her admitting under oath that she knew in 2006 that Epstein was accused of paying cash to have underage girls and young women brought to his home. So yeah, according to the Virgin Island lawsuits, there were a lot of red flags. It also indicates that the bank's ties to Epstein were deeper than acknowledged. Before, it was reported that Erdos only remembered formally meeting Epstein once, which was the day she fired him as a client. From this alone, you would get the impression that she personally wasn't that well acquainted with Epstein. But there were plenty of times that Erdos met Epstein in not so formal settings. I guess she just plum forgot. She gets all the pedophiles with hundreds of millions of dollars they manage confused. It could happen to anyone. According to the Wall Street Journal, Erdos visited Epstein's Manhattan townhouse at least twice in 2011 and 2013. She also exchanged dozens of emails with him. Meanwhile, Justin Nelson, one of Epstein's bankers at J.P. Morgan, went to Epstein's townhouse seven times between 2014 and 2017 with other J.P. Morgan executives and bankers and visited Epstein's ranch south of Santa Fe in 2016. Forget my grandma. Epstein was closer with his bankers than I am with most of my friends. The last time I had anyone come to my house was before I started this channel. Now, I think I should note that the Wall Street Journal's main source of information about J.P. Morgan execs visiting Epstein is people familiar with the matter, which is historically not always the most reliable source. The Wall Street Journal also reported that managing director Paul Barrett scheduled at least five meetings with Epstein during that same time period. But that is according to documents reviewed by the journal, so 
a step up from people familiar with the matter. This is the first time these visits have been reported. J.P. Morgan claims that this type of interaction with Epstein was normal and that meetings with Epstein after 2013 were about other J.P. Morgan bank clients Epstein represented. But this doesn't make J.P. Morgan look any better. In fact, it confirms that J.P. Morgan executives really were meeting with Epstein at his place. It also shows just how desperate J.P. Morgan's executives were to work with a well-connected pedophile like Epstein. That's like saying, we didn't want to work with Ted Bundy because he was a murderer. We just wanted to work with him for his money. See, we're totally innocent. More information may come out in the coming months. J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon is set to answer questions under oath about what he knows about the bank's relationship with Epstein. Some accuse him of being aware of the sex trafficking operation. Other big names are also set to be questioned. Earlier in March, the U.S. Virgin Islands issued subpoenas calling for Google billionaire Sergey Brin, Hyatt Hotels executive chairman Thomas Pritzker, media and real estate billionaire Mortimer Zuckerman, and former talent agent Michael Ovitz to testify about Epstein and J.P. Morgan. What can I say? Billionaires of a feather stick together. Just don't ask why they stick together. <sighs> what a terrible day to understand English. Let's just hope that all those connected to Epstein's operations don't get to party in the USA anymore. And we can name and shame them and they don't end up under obese barcodes. So what do you think of JP Morgan's ties to Epstein? Leave your comments below. And if you like this show, remember that we rely mainly on direct support from viewers like you. Especially with episodes like this that are probably going to get demonetized. All it takes is as little as a dollar per episode over on our crowdfunding website, Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered for more. Click the link below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.